Hello everyone, and welcome to a different sort of sketchbook flip through. I use a lot of actual sketchbooks, but I also do paintings that are separate from the sketchbooks, and I just end up keeping these around, and I'll just show you what I have in my folders here. So this painting here I did from Life at the Zoo of a Zebra. They move around a lot, so I painted this while looking at them, but also from memory and from observation of zebras in different poses, extrapolating to just paint this one. This painting here is a dog that is quite popular on Instagram, and I did this as a sample for pet portraits because I wanted to take more commissions and it really helps to have a sample of the exact type of painting at the exact size that you want to offer. So that's why I did this one, and I just kept a very limited color palette of red and green. This one here is a pretty old painting. I have a bird of paradise, and it's just watercolor, just sort of playing around. This one is actually probably about three years old now. Now here I have some paintings that are more recent, done of bird specimens that we use for studying um, anatomy and stuff like that. So this one is a warbler and really beautiful colors. The yellow is really interesting to paint and um, when you're painting something that's yellow it's super important to keep your paint from touching anything else because yellow can get contaminated really easily and then you lose that brightness. So when I paint yellow things, I like to use palette paper instead of my palette with lots of colors on it just to keep the yellow nice and clean. This painting is a ring-necked pheasant hen and it's really beautiful, beautiful bird um, and I just wanted to focus on the really nice face here. Some people think it's really sad to paint um, dead birds and scientific specimens and taxidermy and stuff like that, but I, I find the expressions kind of serene and, and peaceful. This one is a painting of a juvenile starling, and I actually painted this bird twice in one sitting, so one from the back and one from the front, and I think these ones turned out really well. I especially love the orange in the background of this one. This is one of my favorite paintings of the birds that I've done recently. This one here is a little bit different. This is a creature that I designed and just painted in watercolor for fun. Uh, I've been calling it a butterfly, so it's a mix between our local jackrabbits and some small butterflies, so just a weird little little critter painting. This painting here I did as a demo at Sunnyside Art Supply not too long ago. So this is a Jack Richardson pre-gessoed masonite board and the gesso itself is right here so it's a toned gesso. And then I painted on it with gouache which is not really an ideal medium for painting on this board which I only found out when I tried it out. Um, it doesn't really adhere very well to the gesso, it would probably work better if I sanded it. but this board would be really great for something like oil or acrylic or even casein. And this is a coyote skull. Now inside this bag here I have several paintings all from the same project. So this was a project that I did during school and basically what I did was I painted a bunch of local wildlife from my city uh, using casein and all of the paintings are done on cold press illustration board So it's not hot press. It's cold press So it has a little bit of tooth and I find that works better for painting um, If you're on a budget illustration board can be pretty cheap But I don't use it that much anymore because the absorbency isn't exactly what I like in a in a board or a paper But it'll do if if that's all you have around. It's usually pretty cheap at universities and colleges so these are just a bunch of local songbirds. This one is a European starling. 
They're an invasive species. They're not native to North America, but there's quite a few in my city and they're quite charming. They do a really good job making impressions of different birds. So quite often they like to make red-tailed hawk noises, which can be kind of confusing because I'll get excited thinking there's a hawk, but actually it's just a starling. They're really good at it. This one here is a northern flicker, which is a type of woodpecker, and they actually drill holes in houses, especially if you have stucco, they love to make their nests in the walls there. So I have this one, which is based off of a photo that I took, um, digging into the, the stucco of an apartment building. This one here is just a painting of a coyote. These are some pigeons, and I wanted to include different color types that you can find in pigeons. Their color diversity is really interesting to me, and so all of these are based off of actual pigeons that I saw and photographed myself in my city. Um, I think this white one especially was a really beautiful individual. And here's a painting of some of the jackrabbits. Um, they're white-tailed jackrabbits, which are a type of hare. And I've shown them here in one image, but different stages of their coats. So you would have summer over here, and then transitioning into a winter coat, where they become completely white. And the last one here is probably not my favorite painting of the bunch, but it's fairly simple. This was meant to be the cover for something, so the title would go here. And this is just a painting of a magpie, which are really endearing birds. And I want to do much more justice to them in the future. I don't think this painting really gets across how wonderful magpies are. So in the future, I'd definitely like to do more portraits of those birds. So that's just a sample of what I keep in my storage drawers. I hope you enjoyed those paintings. If you really like what you've seen today, feel free to subscribe or leave me a comment. I'll be posting more sketchbook flip throughs in the future and more time lapse videos. So if you're interested, keep an eye out. And until then, have a great day. Bye!